Get it immediately. In this video series, we're looking at narrative theory. In this particular episode, we're looking at Bath's narrative codes and Cameron's modular narratives. Roland Barthes came up with the idea of narrative codes, and we're going to look at two of these, in particular the hermeneutic code and the proeretic code. These can be simplified to enigma codes and action codes. Action codes are fairly simple. They're any action that moves the narrative forward. Enigma codes are things that make the audience ask questions. These questions are then slowly revealed throughout the story. Let's apply these narrative codes to the film 300. Early on in the film, Leonidas is faced with a difficult decision. Will he fight the Persians or won't he? If he does, a lot of his people may die. Tough decision. This is an enigma code. Will he or won't he fight? His expression is another enigma code. Is it an expression of worry and anguish, or is it anger at what the messenger from Persia is saying? Submission. Here, the shaking of his head is an action code, moving the narrative on, as he is not going to accept the messenger's offer. And if those philosophers and uh, boy lovers found that kind of nerve, then... we must be diplomatic. And of course, then we're faced with more enigma codes, as the messenger says, "Be careful." Choose your next words carefully, Leonidas. They may be your last. And Leonidas looks to his people and his family. Will he definitely say no? Will he go to war? As he reaches for his sword, the music heightens, and here we have another Man. action code. For a madman. Earth and water. But you'll find plenty of both down there. No man. Persian or Greek, no man threatens a messenger. You bring the crowns and heads of conquered kings to my city steps. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. Oh, I've chosen my words carefully, Persian. Perhaps you should have done the same. This is blasphemy. This is madness. As Leonidas lowers his sword, here's another enigma code. Is he changing his mind? The nod from his wife is another action code. Madness. Which means they're going to war. This is Sparta! You could argue that there's no Enigma codes here, because of course they're going to war, they're Spartans. Generally, the more complex the Enigma codes, the more excitement there is when they're revealed. It's worth bearing in mind that not all action codes involve some kind of violence. They are just actions that move the plot forward. Now that's a fairly historical look at narrative theory, and these theorists were looking at literature. This is still, of course, very relevant to us, but one theorist has more recently looked at narrative within cinema. Alan Cameron has identified four different types of modular narrative. Cameron argued that in the last 20 years, popular cinema has displayed a turn towards narrative complexity. In other words, narratives are becoming more complex. Cameron identified four different types of modular narrative. The first is anachronic. These can involve modified flashbacks or flash-forwards. It's when there's no clear dominance between any of the narrative threads. A great example would be the film Pulp Fiction. The movie throws the viewer from one location to another, not necessarily in a linear order. It's actually quite difficult at times to know who we're meant to be following as we're thrown from one storyline to another. One moment we're in a diner following a couple, the next moment we're in a dance competition, the next moment we're in a basement where something strange is going to happen. So the action doesn't follow on chronologically. We get thrown around from beginning, middle to end, back to the beginning, back to the middle and all over the place. 
The next is Forking Path. This is when you get alternative versions of a story within the same narrative. So a film might show the possible outcomes that might result from small changes in a single event or group of events. There might be a number of plot lines that usually contradict one another. Cameron gives the examples of Groundhog Day, Run Lona Run and Sliding Doors. From the beginning of Sliding Doors, we see two versions of the same character. In the first version, she misses her train. In the second version, a small change means she makes the train. From then on the story forks and the film cuts regularly between each version of the storyline. The idea being that we see how different our lives could be if a tiny thing were to change. Then there's episodic. This is not as simple as episodes of a series like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad. Cameron's idea of episodic could be summarised by following a collection of stories joined by one common theme. One of Cameron's examples is 32 short films about Glenn Gould. It's a film about the pianist Glenn Gould. It has 31 short films within it from different perspectives trying to show a different aspect of Gould. It's not chronological and some of its interviews of people that worked with him or interviews of Gould himself, played by an actor, and some of its reenactments of part of his life. But the common theme is Gould himself. There seem to be few or none mainstream films that follow this format. The only example I can think that's close are the Simpson Halloween specials, Treehouse of Horror episodes. In this one episode, we see an anthology of short stories, each held together by the theme Halloween. Then there's split screen. Split screen narratives are spatial rather than temporal. So they're in different locations at the same time. And we see a split screen dividing up the shots of the different locations. A great example of this is the series 24. They split the screen showing different things happening at the same time. So hopefully that's given you an insight into narrative theory which you can apply to your texts. Hopefully in subsequent series, I'll be applying these to more texts. Hope this has helped.